Hey guys, Plonkerboy900 here and welcome back to a brand new challenge video. In the past I've done a lot of gift Pokemon runs and I've even done a Game Corner prize Pokemon run. A lot of people have said that these runs are too easy so I've decided to add another layer of challenge to this. Today we find out, can you beat a Pokemon Crystal Nuzlocke without catching any Pokemon? The name is pretty self-explanatory. I'll be following the normal Nuzlocke rules. This means that if a Pokemon faints, it's effectively dead, and I have to release it. Obviously in a normal Nuzlocke you'd catch the first Pokemon you find on each route, but we'll be doing things a little bit differently. I'm not allowed to catch any Pokemon apart from HM Slaves which I won't use in battle. So what that means is that for this Nuzlocke run I'm going to have to rely only on Pokemon that get given to me, or Pokemon that I can buy, such as Game Corner Prize Pokemon. This severely limits the amount of Pokemon available to me and really should make this a difficult challenge. I've already gone over pretty much all of the rules, so let's just jump straight into this. Wish me luck. I start the game and pick the female character, calling her Megumin. As always, comment down below if you get the reference. I decide to name our rival something witty and inventive. Something like Breath. We get to choose our starter, which is the only Pokemon we'll have for a while. To make things more difficult for myself, I choose Chikorita. It's definitely the worst of the three, so this will be interesting. I decide to nickname my Pokemon for this run, so I name Chikorita Leafy Boy. We get the Pokedex from Professor Oak and beat Breath in a pretty easy rival fight, and gain 69 experience. Nice. We travel to Violet City, the home of the first gym leader Faulkner. Our type means that we're at a disadvantage for the first gym, so I decide to evolve Leafy Boy into Bayleaf just to be on the safe side. With Bayleaf at our disposal, we take on the first gym leader Faulkner. I was a little bit worried, but I didn't need to be. One Razor Leaf is enough to take out the Pidgey thanks to a critical hit, and Pidgeotto is out next. We hit another Razor Leaf which does under half as she fires back with a gust, but despite being super effective, it hardly does anything. We outspeed and hit another Razor Leaf, and we actually get another critical hit, meaning that Pidgeotto goes down and we win the first badge without any problems. Now we've beaten Faulkner, we can get our next team member. We talk to Professor Elm's assistant who gives us an egg. After walking around for a bit, the egg hatches, and inside is a Togepi. Togepi isn't an amazing Pokemon, but it'll have to do for now. I did forget to nickname it, but I will fix that eventually. On the way to Azalea, we get the TM for Swift, which I decide to teach to Togepi because we need a stab move. We arrive in Azalea Town, and after dealing with Team Rocket, we take on the second gym leader, Bugsy. Despite having another type disadvantage, this gym wasn't too bad. Metapod goes down easily to a couple of Razor Leafs, and Cocoon is pretty easy to deal with too. So it's just down to his final Pokemon, Scyther. I decide it's probably best to swap into Togepi. He outspeeds but goes for Leer, so I hit back with a Sweet Kiss to confuse him. I hit a couple of Swifts which really doesn't do that much damage as he hits back with a Quick Attack. Even with the Defense Drop it doesn't do that much damage and one more Swift brings it down to KO range. We're hit with one more Quick Attack but it doesn't do that much and one more Swift is enough to finish off the Scyther, winning us badge number 2 without any real issue either. Before we can leave Azalea Town, we're challenged by Breath once again. He starts off with Ghastly, but one Razor Leaf from one Leafy Boy is all it takes to get the KO thanks to a critical hit. Next out is Zubat, but it goes down easily to a couple of tackles, so it's just down to his starter, Quilava. I decide it'll be best to swap into Togepi. I land a Sweet Kiss and start spamming Swift, and thanks to the confusion damage, we're able to bring it all the way down to red health. He does snap out of Confusion, but only goes for Smokescreen, and we're using Swift, a move that can't miss. What a 10,000 IQ play that was. One more Swift finishes it off, and we win the fight. We travel through Ilex Forest and arrive at the Daycare Center, where we can get our next team member. We're given the Odd Egg, which I promptly hatch, and inside is a Pichu. It's quite weak at the moment, but I'm quite happy with this addition to the team. I name it Chonk based off the Raichu from Mine and Zwigo's Soul Link, which is definitely still happening. I also nicknamed Togepi Benedict, a smashing nickname if I say so myself. We're not done with the new team members yet though. If we head north of Goldenrod City, we get given a Spearow. Fearow is a pretty decent Pokemon, so I think it'll make a good addition to this team. But wait, there's more. I head to the game corner and buy a few coins, and I decide to buy myself a Pokemon. Of the three choices, I decide to go for Cubone. Having a bulky ground type should be really useful. I nickname it Sad Boy and train the team a little bit. In the process, Spearow evolves into Fero, and Togepi evolves into Togetic. I think we're about as ready for the next gym as we're ever going to be. She leads off with the Clefairy, and I have an idea. I lead with Benedict and start using Rollout. 
The third hit is enough to take out Clefairy, and all she has left is her mill tank. She starts using Rollout herself, but it hardly does anything despite being super effective. We hit the fourth turn of Rollout, and we get a critical hit, which is enough to take out mill tank from full health. I was really worried about this gym, not gonna lie, but we dodged a bullet. Before we leave, I decided to buy Abra from the game corner. It served me really well in my game corner only run, so I think it'll be great here too. I decided to keep it in the PC and save it for later. We meet with Bill in the Pokemon Center in Ecritique City, which means we can now get our next team member. We travel back to Goldenrod and get given an Eevee. I couldn't think of an inventive nickname for this, so I just stole my Drybread's idea. We pay a visit to the Burn Tower where we're challenged by Breath once again, but he was a complete pushover. I basically just used Rollout to destroy his entire team, so needless to say, we win. I challenge the gym, but before we can get to the leader, Pichu evolves into Pikachu. This is a big upgrade. We challenge Morty, and this gym wasn't actually too much of a problem. He leaves with Ghastly, so I start with Kenya, and one peck is almost enough to take it out, but he ends up knocking himself out with the curse. Next up is one of his two Haunters, so I swap into Benedict. He goes for curse again, as I decide to start a rollout chain. Unfortunately though, we get put to sleep before we can take it out, so I decide to swap back into Kenya. He uses Mimic but it fails, so I just finish it off with a peck. Gengar is out next, so I swap into Sad Boy. He goes for the Hypnosis, but thankfully he misses. We fire back with a Boomerang and it's actually enough to take it out from full health. It's now just down to his final Haunter. I swap back into Kenya and hit another peck, which does about half, as he goes for Mean Look. I wasn't intending on going anywhere though, so one more peck is enough to finish it off, winning us the fourth badge. This Nuzlocke has pretty much been plain sailing so far. We arrive in Olivine City and meet Jasmine at the lighthouse. She asks us to go to Simon City, but we don't have a Pokemon that can learn Surf. Because of this, I have to catch a Pokemon to use Surf for me, which ends up being a tentacle. As I said, I will not be using it in battle. Now we can surf, we arrive in Cyanwood City and get the secret potion for Amphi. While I'm here, I do some training and evolve a couple of my team members. Cubone grows to level 28 and evolves into Marowak, which is a definite improvement, and Bayleaf evolves into Meganium, which should definitely be useful for the next gym fight, which happens to be the fighting type gym leader Chuck. He starts off with a Primate, so I lead with Kenya. We outspeed and Peck does a great amount of damage, almost enough to KO. He hits back though with a critical hit Karate Chop, but we survive with health to spare. One more peck is enough to finish off Primeape, and now it's just down to his final Pokemon Poliwrath. I send out Leafy Boy and hit a Razor Leaf, which does about 50% of its health. He hits back with a Dynamic Punch though, which confuses us. This is where the bad luck starts. We hit ourselves in Confusion not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. Please someone tell me the odds of that happening. Thankfully he keeps missing Hypnosis though, and eventually we snap out of Confusion. We hit one more Razor Leaf for the knockout, winning us the 5th badge. That was a little bit close for comfort though, I'm not gonna lie. We give the secret potion to Jasmine and now she'll challenge us to a battle. Her first two Pokemon are both Magnemite, which Sad Boy absolutely destroys, but next up is her Steelix. And this thing scares me. I miss the Boomerang, which is really bad news, as she hits an Iron Tail, which does a lot of damage. None of my team want to take an Iron Tail, so I decide to use another Boomerang, hoping it'll be enough. But as you can see, it doesn't even do half, and Steelix takes out Sad Boy with one more Iron Tail. Now it's me who's the Sad Boy. I swap in Benedict and confuse it with a Sweet Kiss, but she hits through Confusion and lands another Iron Tail. It does over half, so I decide to lower its attack with Charm. Unfortunately, Steelix hits through Confusion again and lands another Iron Tail. We just hang on though with 9 HP, so I decide to swap into Leafy Boy. Steelix hits itself with Confusion as we land a Razor Leaf, which brings it down to low health. Unfortunately, she snaps out of Confusion though and lands an Iron Tail, but it doesn't do that much. I go for one more Razor Leaf to finish it off, but she uses a Hyper Potion, and then we miss. This is not good. We do land the next one though, but to be honest, it doesn't do that much damage. We're hit with another Iron Tail, which doesn't do that much, but it does lower our defense. We're hit with one more Iron Tail, which brings us down to low house, so I need to get out of there. I decide to swap into Eevee as a sacrifice. I'm really sorry I didn't get to evolve you, Eevee, but this is what had to happen. We do actually survive one Iron Tail, though, so I decide just to go for Sand Attack. She doesn't miss, though, and Eevee goes down. I swap back into Leafy Boy and go for Synthesis, just so we can get some of our health back. 
He goes for Screech, which is not good news. I go for Razor Leaf though and we get insanely lucky getting a critical hit and then she misses the Iron Tail as well. Because of this, one more Razor Leaf is finally enough to finish off the Steelix and we win the 6th badge. But, not without a couple of casualties. Eevee and Sad Boy, you will be missed. I release them both back into the wild and decide to add Abra to the team. I train it up to level 16 and evolve it into a Kadabra and decide to teach it a few TMs. Namely the elemental punches. We arrive in Mahogany Town and take down Team Rocket, which is easy as always, so let's move on to the 7th gym. Bryce starts off with a seal, so I lead off with our new Kadabra. I land a Thunder Punch, which is almost enough to take it out from full health, but he just hangs on and fires back with an icy wind for a small amount of damage. One more Thunder Punch takes it out, and next up is Dugong, so I swap into Chonk. I outspeed and hit a Thunderbolt, which does over half, as he hits back with an icy wind, which doesn't do too much. Despite the speed drop, we're still faster, and one more Thunderbolt is enough to KO. Price's final Pokemon is Piloswine, so I swap into Meganium. We outspeed and hit a Razor Leaf, which is almost enough to KO, but he just hangs on. Once again, though, his Icy Wind really doesn't do that much damage. He does heal with a Hyper Potion, but one more Razor Leaf brings it back down to red health, and we can just finish it off from there with a Body Slam. And with that, we've already got 7 of the 8 badges, just one more to go. There's some more Team Rocket stuff to deal with here, but as always, they really don't pose any sort of a threat. We do get challenged by our rival, though. First up is Golbat, so I start with Chonk, and one Thunderbolt is actually enough to bring it all the way down to red health. His bite hardly does any damage, so one more Thunderbolt is enough to finish it off, and next up is Magnemite. I swap into Kadabra and hit a super effective Fire Punch, which is enough to take it out from full health. Sneasel's out next, so I swap into Leafy Boy and hit a Razor Leaf, which does decent damage. He decides to go for Leer and then Quick Attack, which really doesn't do that much, and then I go for Body Slam, which is enough to finish it off from there. His starter is out next, so I swap into Benedict. I start spamming Swift, which really doesn't do that much damage, but they do start to add up fast. We are left on red health, but we are able to take it out before we go down ourselves. That was maybe slightly too risky. Breath's final Pokemon is Haunter, so I swap into Kenya and go for Fly. It's almost enough to KO, but he hangs on with a sliver and goes for a mean look. We are faster though, so one pursuit is enough to finish it off from there, winning us the fight. We beat Team Rocket easily, and I decide to go back to Simewood City, as there's a Pokemon I actually forgot to get earlier. We talk to this guy here who gives us a shuckle. I won't be using it on the team just yet, so I'll keep it in the PC for now. We travel through the ice path and arrive in Blackthorn City. There we can face off against the 8th gym leader Claire. She starts off with one of her three Dragonair, so I lead with Kadabra. I go for a super effective ice punch, which is almost enough to take it out, but we get the freeze, meaning we can take it out with one more. The next Dragonair comes out and I hit another ice punch, but this one survives too. It doesn't get frozen though and hits a thunder wave which paralyzes us. This is not good. We're hit with a slam which does decent damage but we get fully paralyzed and then she hits another and we get fully paralyzed again. I have no choice but to switch out so I go into Kenya. Slam doesn't do too much damage and we're able to outspeed and finish it off with a peck. Her final Dragonair comes out so I decide to stay in and go for fly which actually does a good amount of damage but we do get paralyzed. We now get outsped and she goes for Ice Beam which absolutely terrifies me. Somehow we're able to survive though and I go for another fly. Thankfully we don't get fully paralysed and one more fly is enough to finish it off. It's down to her final Pokemon Kingdra so I decide to swap into Leafy Boy. I outspeed and hit a Body Slam which does a decent amount of damage but we don't get the paralysis and she hits a smoke screen. I hit a second Body Slam and this time we do get the paralysis which is just what we needed. One more Body Slam brings it down to KO range as she hits a Hyper Beam. Thankfully though it doesn't do that much damage and one more Body Slam is enough to finish off Kingdra, winning us the 8th and final Gym Badge. Now we've got all 8 badges, there's actually some more Pokemon we can get. The first of these is a Dratini that we can get in the Dragon's Den. I decide to name it Tina, I don't really know why, and get my next Pokemon. I travel through Mount Mortar and face the Karate King. He was really easy to beat though and afterwards he gives us a Tyrogue. I nickname it Hitmon Watt because I don't know which one I'm going to get. I train it up to level 20 until it evolves and we actually end up getting a Hitmon top which is just what I wanted. I've never used one before so it'll be interesting to see how it does but I'll keep it in the PC for now as a backup. We also get a phone call from Dana who gives us a Thunderstone so we can finally evolve Chonk into Raichu. This is definitely a big improvement and just at the right time too. I also train up Tina to level 30 where it evolves into a Dragonair. 
Now we travel through Victory Road and get challenged by Breath for the final time. This battle wasn't too bad. He starts off with a Sneasel so I leave with Leafy Boy and hit a Body Slam which does way over half of its health. He hits back with the Fury Cutter but it hardly does any damage despite being super effective. One more Body Slam takes it out and next up is Golbat so I swap into Kadabra and hit one Psychic for an easy knockout. By the way I've just realised I haven't nicknamed Kadabra so uh, my, <laughs> my bad. Magneton's out next so I stay in and hit a Fire Punch and it's also enough to one hit KO. Haunter also goes down in one shot and next up is his own Kadabra. I swap in Kenya and hit a Drill Peck and it's actually enough to take it out from full health. Last up is this fully evolved starter Typhlosion, so I swap into Tina. We get hit with a weak Flame Wheel as I hit back with the Dragon Breath, but it hardly does any damage. We're hit with another Flame Wheel and this time he gets a critical hit which we barely survive. I hit back with a Waterfall though which does a decent amount. I need to get out of there so I swap into Benedict. We take a flame wheel easily and next turn he sets up a smoke screen. I start setting up rollout. One does a decent amount of damage and we're hit with another flame wheel. The second one misses though so I decide to go for double edge instead. We survive another flame wheel as I go for double edge. I was really worried that the recoil damage was going to take us out but we just managed to hang on, beating breath for the last time. We arrive at the Pokemon League. Here's a quick look at my team. Considering this is a Nuzlocke and I have very limited Pokemon, I'm really happy with the team we've managed to build. I don't know how I'm going to fare against the Elite Four, but I guess I'm just going to have to try and find out. First up is Will, but this fight actually ended up being quite easy. He starts off with a Zartu, so I leave with Chonk and go straight for a Thunderbolt. Thankfully it's enough to KO from full health, and next up is Jinx. I swap in Kadabra and hit a Fire Punch, which does a lot of damage. Jinx has a lot of special defense though, so she hangs on, and hits us with a Double Slap. Despite hitting 5 times, it really doesn't do much damage, and one more Fire Punch finishes it off. His second Zartu is out next, so I swap back into Raichu, and once again, a Thunderbolt is enough to KO from full health. Executor's out next, so I swap into Kenya. I go for a super effective Drill Peck, but it's not quite enough to take it out. He survives on red health, but just goes for Leech Seed. Because of this, we're able to hit one more Drill Peck for the KO without even taking damage. Will's final Pokemon is Slowbro, so I go back into Raichu again. One Thunderbolt brings it all the way down to red health, but he just wastes a turn using Amnesia, so we can just finish it off with a Strength, winning us the first battle of the Elite Four with relative ease. Next up is Koga, but somehow he ended up being easier than Will. He starts off with an Ariado, so I leave with Kadabra. One Psychic is easily enough to KO from full health, and next up is Fortress. I stay in because we have Fire Punch, and that too is a one-hit KO. Muck is out next so I stay in and hit a Psychic which does a lot of damage. He does hang on though. He only goes for Minimize though and we don't end up missing so one more Psychic is enough to get the KO. Venomoth is out next but he too is weak to Psychic so we stay in and get the one hit KO. Kadabra is basically dealing with his entire team. Koga's final Pokemon is Crobat so I stay in and we're actually faster and you guessed it, one Psychic is enough to KO from full health, easily winning us the second fight of the Elite Four. Next up is Bruno, but he too wasn't really a problem. He starts off with Hitmontop, so I leave with Kadabra again, and one Psychic is enough to take it out from full health. Next out is Onyx, so I swap into Leafy Boy, and easily take it out with one super effective Razor Leaf. Hitmonchan is out next, so I swap back into Kadabra. We're hit with a weak Mac Punch, which hardly does any damage, as we fire back with a Psychic, which, you guessed it, is a one-hit KO. Where would I be without Kadabra? Machamp is out next, so I stay in. I go for another Psychic, but Machamp actually survives. He then goes for Rock Slide, which is absolutely terrifying. Somehow we survive the hit and take it out in two more Psychics after he uses a Max Potion. Koga's final Pokemon is Hitmonlee, so I decide to swap into Kenya. One well-placed Drill Peck is all it takes to get the KO, winning us the third match pretty easily as well. As is also true in real life, Karen was pretty difficult to deal with. She leads off with Umbreon, so I start with Chonk. We get hit with a lot of sand attacks, which is not good considering we're trying to hit Dynamic Punch, an already inaccurate move. We end up missing four times in a row, and then we get hit with a faint attack. Finally, on our last Dynamic Punch we're able to hit, but not only that, we get a critical hit as well. It brings it down to red health and we get the Confusion too. I decide to swap into Leafy Boy as we get hit with a Confuse Ray. We do hit ourselves a couple of times, but eventually we can hit a Body Slam for the KO. Vileplume is out next so I bring out Kadabra and hit a Psychic. As if I even need to tell you, it's enough to KO. Murkrow is out next but easily goes down to one Thunderbolt from Raichu and next out is Gengar. I swap back into Kadabra again and thankfully we're faster and we can hit a Psychic. As always it's enough to KO from full health, thank god for Kadabra. Karen's final Pokemon is Houndoom though and this ended up being quite difficult to deal with. 
I decide to swap into Benedict. We get hit with a flamethrower but we're able to survive and hit back with a sweet kiss so we can confuse it. Houndoom hits itself in confusion this turn thankfully and we hit a rollout which doesn't do that much damage. Unfortunately she doesn't hit herself in confusion twice though and hits one more flamethrower and takes out Benedict. You will be missed. I decide to swap into Tina as we have a water move but we get hit with a crunch. We do hang on though and hit back with a surf but it doesn't do anywhere near as much damage as I was hoping. No one on my team wants to take a crunch so I have no real option but to stay in and just let Tina go down. It was a tough decision but she was definitely the weakest link of the team. I decide to swap into Kenya as I think he'll be faster. Thankfully we are faster and one drill pack is enough to finish off Houndoom. Winning us the final match of the Elite Four, but not without a couple of casualties. I put our fallen members to the back of the team and now it's time for the champion Lance. As always he starts off with Gyarados so I lead with Chonk. We're faster and one super effective Thunderbolt is all it takes to get the KO. Next up is one of his three Dragonite, so I go into Kadabra because we have Ice Punch. I outspeed and thankfully one Ice Punch is enough to KO. The second Dragonite also goes down to one Ice Punch and next out is Aerodactyl. I swap Raichu back in as we get hit with a Wing Attack for a small amount of damage. I go for Thunderbolt but it's not enough to take it out. Next turn though we get hit with a Hyper Beam. Not only that, it's a critical hit. Needless to say, we lose Chonk. I swap back into Gadabra and because he has to recharge we can just hit a Thunder Punch which is enough to take it out. Next up is Charizard so I stay in. I stay in and hit a Thunder Punch which actually does over half of its health. He hits back with a Flamethrower but we're able to survive the hit. One more Thunder Punch is enough to finish it off and it's down to his final Pokemon, his level 50 Dragonite. I stay in and go for an Ice Punch praying that it will be enough to KO. The health keeps going down but he survives on a sliver. But then we get the freeze, that is insanely lucky. We definitely would not have survived the next turn. He does go for a full restore but one more Ice Punch brings it all the way back down to red health. We're faster though so one more is enough to finish it off. Beating Lance and winning us our Elite Four challenge. We lost a few members along the way but we managed to beat a Nuzlocke without catching any Pokemon. Although, we all know that we're not done yet. We've still got red to beat and that I feel like is going to be even more of a challenge than Lance. I release our fallen comrades Chonk, Tina and Benedict. You guys will be sorely missed. On the plus side though, we can actually get a few more team members. While travelling through Kanto, I get to the Celadon City game corner and I buy another Pikachu. I decide to name this one Chonk the Second. While the Kanto gyms are quite easy, there was actually one fatality in the form of our starter, Leafy Boy who fell to a critical hit Ice Beam from Misty's Starmie. This was a really unfortunate Pokemon to lose. We managed to beat Misty without any other problems though, and the rest of the gyms were pretty easy too. I say goodbye to our beloved starter Leafy Boy. You serve me well and I'll miss you dearly. I decide that I need to bulk up the team. I buy as many coins as I can until I can get a Lavatar. I name it Darude, obviously, and evolve it all the way up to a Tyranitar. This should definitely come in handy for blue and red. Speaking of blue, he was actually a lot more difficult than the other gym leaders. He starts off with a Pidgeot so I lead with our new Darude and hit a Rock Slide. Thanks to our amazing attack stat, it's enough to knock it out from full health. Next up is Rhydon, so I go into Kadabra and hit an Ice Punch. It does a huge amount of damage but not enough to KO. Rhydon hits back with an Earthquake and it's enough to KO Kadabra from full health. That was one of our best team members, gone just like that. I swap into Pikachu to outspeed and hit an Iron Tail, which is enough to finish it off. Alakazam is out next, so I swap into Rude. He sets up a Reflect as I hit a Rock Slide, which does a lot of damage considering. He goes for Recover this turn, but that's fine as I actually go for Crunch this turn. It's super effective and it's a special move in this game, so it takes out Alakazam from there. Next up is Gyarados, so I swap back into Pikachu and hit a Thunderbolt, which does a lot of damage. It's not enough to KO though, but he misses the Hydro Pump. One more Thunderbolt is enough to finish off the Gyarados and next up is Executor. I swap back into Darude and hit a Crunch. It brings it all the way down to red health but he just wastes a turn charging Solar Beam. Because of this we're able to outspeed and KO with one more Crunch and it's down to his last Pokemon Arcanine. We're outsped and hit with a Flamethrower but it really doesn't do that much damage. I hit back with a Rock Slide and because the Reflect is worn off now it's enough to KO from full health. Winning us the fight against Blue, but not without losing a member. I deposit Kadabra who's definitely been the best team member up to this point. You will be sorely missed. All I have to do now is beat Red so I just buy the final two Pokemon that I hadn't got yet. 
Those being Wobbuffet, which I nicknamed God Slayer, and Porygon, which I named Band because of that one episode of the anime. I evolved Chonk the second with the Thunderstone and start putting together my final team. Here it is. We have Firo, Hitmontop, Tyranitar, Wobbuffet, Raichu, and Porygon. I feel like this is the best chance I have at beating Red, so let's see if we can do it. Well, here we are, the final match of the entire game. Red leads off with Pikachu, so I start with Darude. He goes for Charm, but it actually fails, meaning that we can hit an Earthquake, which is enough to take it out from full health. Venusaur is out next, so I swap into Kenya and hit a Drill Peck, and we actually end up getting a critical hit, which means we can take it out from full health. Next up is Blastoise, so I swap into Chonk the second. I go for a Thunderbolt, but it does just under half. Blastoise sets up a rain dance though, and this was a terrible idea for him. I have the move Thunder, which is 100% accurate in the rain, so I just go for it. It's stronger than Thunderbolt, so it's enough to finish off Blastoise. Espeon is out next, so I swap back into Darude as we get hit with a weak mud slap. It lowers our accuracy, but we don't miss the crunch, and we actually end up getting another critical hit, which takes it out from full health as well. This has been an insanely lucky fight so far. Next up is Snorlax, so I swap into him on top. I go for counter as we get hit with a body slam. I'm quite confident we can survive the hit, which we do, but we get paralysed. Not only that, we get fully paralysed and then go down to one more body slam. I swap in God Slayer and go for the same tactic. We get hit with another body slam and we survive again, and this time we don't get paralysed. We retaliate with a counter which is easily enough to finish it off from full health. Red's final Pokemon is Charizard, so I swap back into Darude. We're hit with a weak flamethrower which we're able to survive with no problem and fire back with a 4 times super effective rock slide. Needless to say, it's enough to KO from full health and we win the fight. We beat Red and beat a Pokemon Crystal Nuzlocke without catching any Pokemon. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, it was something a bit different. It takes my normal gift Pokemon runs and adds an extra layer of challenge to it which I really enjoyed. It was by no means easy, but we managed to pull through, and even had a full team of 6 by the time we got to Red. I was really happy with the Pokemon we got as well. Meganium was surprisingly decent, and Kenya actually ended up being one of the best team members as well. Obviously I can't talk about team members without bringing up Kadabra, who is absolutely amazing in this run. That thing saved me in countless battles. Let me know if you want to see this on another Pokemon game. I'd happily give it a go. If you enjoyed this video then please consider leaving a like and comment down below with what challenge I should take on next. Remember if I pick your idea you'll get a shout out in the video. Please consider following me on Twitter and Instagram and joining the Discord. All the links you need will be in the description below. Once again I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching, until next time.